Welcome back golfers. Today we're going to talk about the natural dominances in our body and how that affects your swing. So stay tuned. So there are three main dominances we're going to look at that create pattern in our golf swing that are really important for us as a teacher, as a, as a student, and us as golfers to really understand these patterns. So if we're going to compare ourselves to somebody else, we should be doing it to somebody who has a similar pattern of dominance in their body. So the first and simplest area that we're going to talk about of dominance in the body is right-handed or left-handed. Do you swing right-handed? Do you swing left-handed? Are you right-handed or you left-handed? So that right there will determine where typically our power is going to come from in our body or where we feel dominance in our body. Now when we talk about dominance in our body, it's not always a good thing. Sometimes we need to understand the dominance of our body and to also understand the weakness of our body as well because the weakness of our body could be creating an over dominance of another side of our body. Put the club in your right hand, take it to the top, create your hinge right there, create a nice box, create the hinge. So hold on to that in the right hand and I want you to try to hold it and then pause right in there while maintaining that, that angle. And you can see it just wants to release. If you do it, you're gonna feel it. It just wants to release. That's because your right side or your trail side, if you're right-handed, your trail side, is your pushing side. This is all pushing side. So pushing sides can create power, um, but it also can create a loss of energy through pushing away the shaft and early releasing or casting or flipping in the hands. And that can cause a lot of issues with timing the hit and getting your hands to actually lead more at impact. So if you're a dominant, your dominant side is your right side and you dominate your golf swing with your right side, you're most likely pushing the club from the top using the shoulders in a top down sequence and that's gonna be hurting your golf swing. So your lead side in your golf swing is your engine to your golf swing. This is your engine. So if you take the club now, put it in your lead side and take it to the top, hold on to it. Now try to hold on to that, that first move down, try to hold on to that angle. Now you're able to do it because that lead side is a pulling side. And if you're pulling, you're able to hold on to that angle easier. So in the golf swing, we need to understand which sides are dominant side, which sides are weaker side, and then understand that their weaker side is actually gonna, need, we actually probably need to strengthen that side and make it more dominant in our golf swing because so, that's your engine. Your right hand, which is, or your trail hand, typically is the one you write with. And that is also your fine motor skills. Fine motor skills are super important because fine motor skills t connect to your brain so you'll be able to connect with the club and then just move the club the way it needs to to square up the face. So it's really hard to create power and have the fine motor skills to release the club properly from the same side. The other thing that's gonna happen is your right arm, if you let it just fall naturally down, it's gonna bring the shaft more vertically up and onto your trail leg. If you're on your lead side and you're driving through from your lead side, it naturally falls to the inside part of your lead leg. So when you come into it, it's easier to get that forward shaft lean and into a better impact position when you're driving from your lead side rather than your trail side. We want the trail side to feel like you're skipping rocks and into this position and feel like it's slinging and I did a great video on the trail, how the trail arm works. Um, check that video out, I'll put, it, put a link in the description. And if you get this down, you can really feel how the body should properly unwind and sequence using your lead side as your engine. So the next area of dominance in our body, which will affect our swing pattern, and that is our eyes. So our eyes will determine how far 
back, we can take the club or rotate our shoulders and where our head should, will be as we come through the golf ball. And this is important to understand because most tour players that we take as models in our golf swing are lead eye dominant. So how do we know what eye is our dominant side? So to do the test, what we want to do is just put a finger out, cover up something in front of you. Now looking straight through that finger as if it's almost invisible, put, keep the finger right on that object, close one eye, close the other eye. What you're going to see is one eye, it stays right on top of the object, which is your dominant eye, and one, it'll jump to the left or jump to the right, and that is your non-dominant eye. Why is this important again? Because it determines where we're going to take our shoulders into the backswing. What do I mean by that? So, like myself, I'm right eye dominant. When I take it back, I don't want to lose sight of that golf ball. And I don't want to break the vision of the bridge on the bridge of my nose to that golf ball. So I'm only going to take my head and tilt it back so far before I start losing the vision of that golf ball through my dominant eye. So if you're trailed eye dominant, you probably aren't going to get a giant rotation in your backswing. If you're lead eye dominant though, your head can tilt further away because you can still see the ball peripherally, allowing your shoulders to get maybe even past 90 degrees. And this is what I mean by the guys on tour and traditionally the guys who hit it the furthest, or girls, are probably lead eye dominant or left eye dominant if they're right handed. Because they're able to get a larger rotation, a bigger load, into their backswing, store up more energy and power to deliver through into the golf ball. Now we also gotta look at this as through the impact zone towards finish. So yes, a dominant lead eye will give you more power, but at the same time, there's finesse in the game and golfers to be able to use their trail eye dominance to create more finesse in their golf swings. And what do I mean by that? So when we're swinging down through the golf ball, traditionally you've heard a lot of people say, keep your head down. Well, that comes from a, a lead eye dominant perspective. If you're a trail eye dominant person like myself, your head can move forward. You've seen this in slow motion videos of like older players like Annika Sornstan, David Duval, uh, current golfers, Henrik Stenson, Dustin Johnson, those golfers, when they get into impact, you can see their head is looking over out in front of the golf ball because their peripheral still sees the ball, right eye dominant. Most guys on tour, most girls on tour, lead eye dominant, when they come into the ball, you're gonna see that. And that's because they are looking down at that ball through their dominant eye, keeping their head focused there. All right, the final area of dominance we need to look at is in our feet. And this is an easy pattern way for us to test which foot or which side of our body is our dominant side. And that is which foot, if you ran and jumped, which I'm gonna show a video right here of how, I'm gonna, how you would naturally test which is your dominant side. And I'm gonna use my daughter Zoe as our, as our subject to show. So in this video, you can watch, Zoe first runs and jumps. And you can see she springs off of her left foot. So that instantly tells if you jump off your left foot, that's your dominant foot. Now, some of you might jump off both feet, some of you might jump off your trail foot. It's gonna determine what the pattern is in your golf swing. Next, we look at if you just stand, lift a foot, and then spring and jump. How much power can you create from that spring out of just the one leg? Same thing with the, you know, do it on both sides, just like Zoe's showing us here, and it'll determine how much power you have in your body to create spring out of that side. Now this matters a lot in the way we move our feet. And like we said in the original, you know, we were talking about the right hand versus the left hand, the dominance versus weakness in our body. This is another area we gotta train out the weakness so that we can be more balanced in our body 
as far as what is working through the through the motion so this means if you're like myself I am a left leg jumper I spring hard out of my left leg so when I'm swinging it's real easy for me to get the compression and extension using that rotation out of my left side now if you're a right foot jumper this side if you watch golfers that get really high up on their toes they're probably trail leg jumpers so they can get more into using their right side to help spring through impact so you'll see that foot come up off the ground if you watch a lead leg jumper for me left when I come through the golf ball my side just wants to stay on the ground forever it just wants to lean stay on the ground and it might even be there the heel still on the ground then it'll come through instantly tells you if you see that in a pattern of somebody well you're probably a lead leg jumper lead legs you know is your dominant side you know you're not going to get as much of that heel drive or that leg drive through so you're probably not going to get your hips as far open as you would naturally see maybe one of the tour players because a tour player like i said left eye dominant most of them are trail foot jumpers because that's how you get all that power driving through that golf ball. So the other area we gotta look at this, because we have weaknesses in our body as well. So if you think of, if you're a lead leg jumper like myself, if you shift hard into that back leg and get a lot of power stored up into the trail leg, well, you're probably not gonna be as strong driving through the golf ball to your lead side because that's not your natural side to drive from. You probably are gonna end up getting stuck on that side and maybe you get handsy with the swings because you have too much weight forward. So your weight being starting here, if it goes all the way into that right foot or you get a slide, you're not probably gonna get it back. If your weight starts here and you're a lead leg jumper, probably you're gonna want to have a smaller weight shift going back right there because you're gonna be able to utilize your strong side better if you don't shift so much weight into your weak side. That being said, if you're a trail leg jumper, you gotta watch driving too quickly because that's gonna get you stuck in the sequence. When you get to the top, you gotta to make sure you make that compression, bring the arms down, and then drive hard through it. So if you get yourself into a negative spine tilt position and your dominant side is your right side and your weaker side is your left or even if you're just weak on your left side it's going to be hard for you to get those hips back up and rotate through so understanding what your dominant side is super important with where you're going to place your spine tilt where you're going to put your weight in your body and where you're gonna get the most out of using the ground and your lower, lo your lower body to help you rotate through properly. Golfers, I hope you got a lot out of this video. I hope you understand a little bit more out of what your body does naturally. If you're looking to model yourself after another golfer, try to model that somebody that has similar patterns to you. Look at their feet, which way they would naturally spring from. Look at their hands, which side are they naturally dominant with. And look at their eyes, which eye are they naturally dominant with. You match those up, you have a better chance of figuring out a body type of a golfer to, to model after for your golf swing. Thank you for watching this week. And remember, if your feet aren't working, your swing's not working. Catch you guys next time. Thank you.